Hey there, um, welcome to day six of the advent of code. I'm really looking forward to this one because um, disclosure, I've actually read the prompt already. And it reminds me of bioinformatics or if you just start to do some programming for genomics, we're gonna look at something that sounds awfully like start codons. And yeah, that might be exciting. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. Day six, tuning trouble. The preparations are finally complete and you and the elves leave camp on foot and begin to make your way towards the star fruit grove. As you move through the dense undergrowth, one of the elves gives you a handheld device. He says that it has many fancy features, but the most important one right now to set up is the communication system. However, because he's heard you have significant experience dealing with signal-based systems, he's convinced the other elves that it would be okay to give you their one man malfunctioning device, surely you'll have no problem fixing it. As if inspired by comedic timing, the device emits a few colorful sparks. To be able to communicate with the elves, the device needs to lock on to their signal. The signal is a series of seemingly random characters that the device receives one at a time. To fix the communication system, you need to add a subroutine to the device that detects a start of packet marker in the data stream. In the protocol used by the elves, the start of a packet is indicated by a sequence of four characters that are all different. The device will send your subroutine a data stream buffer, your puzzle input. Your subroutine needs to identify the first position where four most recently received characters are all different. Specifically, it needs to report the number of characters from the beginning of the buffer to the end of the first such four character marker. <clears throat> I should have mentioned at the start that I'm working in the R programming language and R convention is to start arrays from index one. If you're using a different programming language such as Python, their convention is to start at index zero. It's just something to keep in mind here as we're doing our coding. The folks who wrote the puzzle um, had that in mind, so they explained things pretty well, and hopefully we all come to the same answers. For example, you received the following data stream buffer. Blah, blah, blah. After the first three characters have been received, I have not been enough characters. The first time a marker could occur is after the fourth character. So that's here, MJQJ, making the four the MJQJ. Because J is repeated, this is not a marker. You keep going, look at these four. You look at these four, QJ, PQ. And then finally, you're going to reach this point, J, P, Q, M. Once we get to a point where the four letters are different, we are going to call this a start, uh, what do they call it? A start of packet marker. I'm actually dreading now that I think about this. Part one sounds relatively easy. I have no idea what part two is. Uh, once we write a function to find the start of packet marker, we're going to try it on these test cases as well, where the example provides us some answers. How many characters need to be processed before the start of packet marker is detected? Okay, so I have uh, my R Studio going here. We're in day six. My puzzle input looks like that but we're gonna work on the example first, which is here. We're going to build a function called find start of packet marker. That's gonna be a function that takes in a buffer stream. Think about formats here while I comment this. Input buffer stream, which is a string of characters. Output.
barcode notation, which is an integer, where the previous four characters are distinct. So we need the stream length is the number of characters in the buffer stream. Then for location in, we're going to start on the fourth location, go to the stream length. to do is um, look at four characters and what this is what I'm going to do is grab the previous four characters and I'm going to use the string When you work with uh, several programming languages, it's hard to remember all of them. I'm gonna just Google what I'm trying to remember. Oh, I think what happened was I forgot to actually load my tidyverse. My hesitance right now is my puzzle input's not loading. Come back to that. I'm going to do a string sub of the buffer string from location minus four to the location. Now I should just try this on the string so far. So for that buffer string, be that I'm trying to double check that my for loops that my code inside the for loops working correctly. Stream length is thirty in this case. And if I go through the for loop, this window I can see in the top right corner is actually grabbing five characters, and I want only four characters. That's what I was worried about. So this should be a minus three here.
So now, at least at the end of the for loop, it's grabbing these last four characters. I'm just going to call something A. What I'm going to do is I'm going to string split this window by or I split up the letters so that way when I run the for loop what A looks like are those last four letters separated and I'm going to make another one Just in case there's a repeating string, I have them unique. I just test uh, what what I'm looking for is if characters are repeated, then unique will actually reduce the number of characters. Let me see if I could find an example here. Um, let's make this window. Be those first four characters M J Q J. So now, what A is going to do is find those four characters and split them up like so. What B is going to do is find those four characters, but only we find the unique ones. So now. A has four characters, B has three characters. Now what I could do is if length of A equals length of B, that's what we want overall, we're going to break and then return the location. So now we're looking at this example we find location seven just like the example said we would. So, like so. What I want to do next is go ahead and test out my function on these other examples. These should return numbers five, six, ten, and eleven if I programmed everything correctly, and that's what we got. Now I might have to admit defeat if my puzzle input is not even loading. This should all be just one character character string I should say but for some reason R is not doing anything with that Out of curiosity, I wonder if I can just brute force it. For 
for some reason R is not treating this as just one character, one character string. Keep saying that. That is, we're looking at all of this here, and it should be just treated as one character string. No new lines, not multiple lines or anything. So I don't know why that's not loading. So what I'm going to do is copy this into a text file. Come back to our studio. Expect a numeric constant. Huh. For some reason, sometimes during today's coding session, if I just hit run twice, it, it works. Okay, let's just finish this off, run my run my code on the puzzle input. Got the right answer, but I'm really dreading part two. Part two, your device's communication system is correctly detecting packets, but it still isn't working. It looks like it also needs to look for messages. A start of message marker is just like the start of packet marker, except it consists of 14 distinct characters instead of four. How many characters need to be processed before the start of message marker is detected? Sounds like I, I just have to repeat my code, but change out. Fourteen for four? Okay. Let's call... Let's call this function find message. And this is going to seek out a message location where the previous 14 characters are distinct. We have to start at the 14th location. We're going to grab 14 at a time. And then In the examples, we should be getting 19, 23, 23, 29, and 26. So if my find message function works, then 
those were all the changes we needed. Okay. Then run this on the puzzle input. Um, <laughs> I was dreading part two, but just like uh, yesterday, it seems like the folks who made the advent of code um, so far have had presented challenges that are accessible to novices like me. And I look forward to tomorrow. See you then.